number 74. Righty on the first. Kneel at the cross. Christ will meet you there. Come while he waits for you. Listen to his voice. Leave your camera and begin life anew kneel at the cross leave every care kneel at the cross jesus will meet you there kneel at the cross there is room for all who won his glory Bliss there awaits. Harm can never be full. Those who are anchored there kneel at the cross. Christ, every care kneel at the cross. Jesus will meet you there. Kneel at the cross, keep your idols up, look unto realms above. Turn not away to life's sparkling cup, trust only in his love. Kneel at the cross, leave every care, kneel at the cross. Jesus will meet you there. All right, you can be seated. 
Praise the Lord. Good to be saved, ain't it? And good to be back in the Lord's house. Appreciate everybody coming back out. And uh, enjoyed that good meat today. Amen. Wasn't that awesome? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Anywho, uh, again, appreciate the Lord this morning. And uh, appreciate the help of God as I stood to preach. And tonight, looking forward to service. Um, I asked Brother Connor to preach for us. So y'all pray for him. He said he's got a message on his heart, so uh, looking forward to hearing that. A couple of announcements again. Um, February the 20th through the 26th, uh, Canaan Independent Baptist Church is having their camp meeting. And on the 25th and 26th, they'll be hosting their youth services. So that'll be the Friday night, Saturday morning services. And so uh, young people, if you've not already done so, let Brother Zach know so that uh, we can make plans for you to to go and let them know so they've got plenty of space for us. Also, you got something to add, Zach? Okay. Also, um, next Sunday, I failed to mention this this morning, so y'all forgive me, but next Sunday morning, uh, regular service, immediately following service, uh, we're going to have a Valentine's banquet. Um, and so come ready to enjoy some food and fellowship. You don't have to have a Valentine to go and eat food on Valentine's Banquet Day. Amen? It's just right. about fellowship. Right, Brother Beckham? Right. You with me? I'm with you. Good. Praise the Lord. So that's next Sunday at immediately following service, and that'll be a good time. We're looking forward to that. That is all of the announcements that I have, I believe. Business meeting will be next Sunday, Lord willing, immediately following, or not immediately following, but before the night service. We'll have business meeting at four, service will be at five. And so, uh, praise the Lord. All right. It is good to be saved. It is good to be back in the Lord's house. I want to appreciate, I tell the church how I appreciate uh, the reports I've got. One pastor sent me a text. If I had my phone, I'd read it. I do. Let me read what she said. This is wonderful. Brother Josh, Brother Josh England texted, and he said, uh, he said, our church, he said, for our church, we threw down like James Brown this morning. Amen. <laughs> he said, great service. Wonderful service. Good. And he said, uh, he said, our young people was fired up, and he put them in the choir, and they went to singing, Oh, How Marvelous, and they sung it this morning like never before. Ain't that wonderful? I'm glad for that report and glad that uh, they got some help. Hallelujah. So, uh, appreciated that. All right, let's do this. Let's talk a little bit about prayer requests, and let's have an altar of prayer together tonight. Uh, be sure to remember those that are still dealing with some sickness. Um, Brother Joe stepped out, said he, uh, Morgan wasn't feeling well, so he took her back home. And uh, we still got a handful of others, I think, that's been dealing with sickness. And so let's pray for them. Also, I want to mention one more. Um, this week, and the uh, last time we was able to have youth retreat here in Russell County, uh, we used what's called M&M Lodge over in Jamestown. And the owner there, his name is Craig, he works with Chris. And they've been really good to us. They've given us great prices. They've not complained. We had boys staying in every cabin, and that lady acted like it was absolutely fine. I'm thinking, you're a saint, amen. You're a good person. But um, but I, when I contacted her this year, she shared with me something about how that she's on dialysis and later found out that her husband is actually going to be able to donate a kidney to her. They actually matched, which is like a very extremely low chance of that actually happening, and it did. Uh, but when we was over there today, she told us, she was like, yeah, she said, I've been laying down today, pretty wore out. She said, that dialysis just takes a lot out of her. And so I want to pray for her. Her, his, her name is Cheryl. Do you know their last name? Kellum. Kellum? Kellum. And so uh, let's pray for her. They were really good to us and just acted wonderful. And so I want to pray for her. And ask the Lord to help her as she's going to be getting that kidney transplant and dealing with all this. It's got to be a lot, okay? So uh, let's pray for her tonight. Somebody else with a prayer request before we pray. 
Anything at all. Katie? Okay. Is that the soccer coach? Okay. Remember her dad, Cheryl. Uh, I can't remember her last name. You know, Newby. That's right. Cheryl Newby. Her daddy, Franklin Newby, passed away. Uh, let's pray for her and Mannix, who comes here off and on with Kagan and some. So let's pray for them, Cheryl and Mannix. Somebody else. Oh, Hannah. Son, four years ago, in his car accident, the plane became a quadriplegic. Uh, this week, they got a grant to get some new software on an iPad. Um, and for the very first time in four years, he was able to ride and communicate with his son. Oh, man. It was like by the eye twitching and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so they were, he wrote his son's name, and then he was just apparently amazing. Wow. How old is he? You know? And what's his name? His name is Josh Burke. Josh Burke. Uh, Harold and Marty are his parents. Well, let's pray for Josh. That's a rough thing to have to go through. Quadriplegic and is now going to have to communicate. But aren't you glad he's got a way? That's amazing. With software, can use his eyes to talk. That's a, that's a tough thing. So let's pray for them and give the Lord praise. That he was able to communicate with them. Amen. Joshua Burke, 33 years old. Somebody else. Miss Angela. Thank you, sis. Somebody else. How's his eye doing overall, do you know? He said the other night it went back out. He thinks so? He would know so. I don't know why I said it like that. Partially. Okay, let's pray for Brother Ricky. Pray for his eyes, and he goes back 16th of February. Let's pray for that. All right, amen. One more I failed to mention. Remember the Whiteheads, West and his wife, I believe it's April. Um, they were planning on being here today and planning on going to youth retreat, what he told me, but uh, he's having a lot of trouble. His grandmother lives with them, and she's got pretty bad dementia and things, and it's a lot, so... Uh, pray for them. He said their family's struggling to figure out how to go about all this, you know. And those of you that's dealt with that type of situation, you know they need prayer. So pray for them. Whitehead family. Somebody else. Miss Michelle. Yeah, Miss Michelle. Brother Allen, remember them. I don't think they've been feeling the best. You got one, darling, Allie? You mom with work? <laughs> Let's remember Miss Angela Bevins and her work. Thank you, darling. Anybody else? Miss Tanya. Yes. Amen. Amen. So yeah, let's as Ms. Tanya said, pray for her and her family that goes to Miss Desiree's celebration of life. Ms. Tanya's pretty burdened, that's the word, burdened about Miss Desiree's family. And so let's pray that they can be a light and a witness and a blessing to them. And the Lord will give them wisdom, wisdom. And go before them and maybe prepare some hearts 
Wouldn't that be good, amen, church? Let's pray for that. Pray for them as they try to be a witness. Thank you, Miss Tanya. Somebody else, anything at all before we pray? All right. Well, remember Brother Connor, as he stands to preach, let's ask the Lord to help him and uh, continue to pray for our, our church and our church family. Um, ask the Lord to bless us and help us and watch over us. We're just trying to be something for the cause of Christ, okay? And so uh, let's ask the Lord to bless us tonight. All right, Brother Beckham, go ahead. And anybody that would like to uh, come and use the altar, by all means, let's go, Lord, in prayer wherever you are and ask the Lord's touch on these requests tonight as we pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for, uh, Lord, your many blessings, God. You've surely been abundantly good. Thank you for the service this morning. I thank you for loving us in spite of us, God. And, Lord, I pray that you touch this service tonight. We'll be with Brother Connor as he stands. I pray you'd help him to preach. Give him unction and anointing and power and liberty, Lord. And I pray you guard his words. And help him, Lord, to stand and then deliver your message for your will. Lord, I pray you touch the many prayer requests. Lord, continue to be with Brother Joe and his family. We pray that uh, they continue to get better. Be with uh, Lord Miss Cheryl Kellum at m and Lodge. Lord, I pray that you touch her body. Be with the surgery. Lord, thank you for them. Thank you for their, uh, Lord, their their kindness, God. And uh, Lord, them uh, going out of their way for us. It was a blessing, God. I pray you'd help them and be with her, God. Be with Katie. Uh, be with her friend Cheryl Newby and their family with the passing of her daddy. God, we just pray you'd help them and watch over them. Uh, Lord, I pray you'd be with the uh, uh, Burke's family and be with Josh Burke, uh, Lord. And Lord, we give you praise for that new software. And Lord, the ability to communicate. Lord, I can imagine that there's a lot of, uh, Lord, new struggles every day going through what he is. And I, I, that's all I can do is imagine. So Lord, I just pray you continue to help them and touch him and his family. Lord, I pray you be with Brother Ricky. We ask, Lord, that his eye, Lord, is, uh, I pray, Lord, you touch him. He believes, Lord, that his eyes went out again. But God, we pray that maybe it's not as serious. Lord, as he goes to the doctor on the 16th, Lord, we pray for a good report. And I ask, Lord, you'd help him. Uh, be with the unspoken prayer requests, Lord. Uh, I pray, God, that you touch each and every one in our midst, God, uh, that, that Lord, folk may not feel comfortable mentioning, but it doesn't negate the importance of it in their heart. God, you know what their heart is, and I pray that you'd hear it and answer it. Father, be with the Whitehead family. I pray you give them wisdom and help them, Lord, in this time. God, I ask that you be with uh, Miss Michelle, not feeling well, God. Lord, if you'd just be with her and help her as she continues to get well, be with Brother Allen. And Lord, be with Miss Angela Bevins, Lord, and, and her work situation, God. Thank you for them. Pray you touch that home. Touch Brother Seth. Be with them, Lord. You know the need. God, I pray you be with Miss Tanya and her family, Lord. They're going to go up, Lord willing, be at that celebration of life. And Lord, uh, Miss Tanya's definitely burdened. I thank you, Lord, for the burden for souls, Lord. And God, I pray you give them wisdom, give them discernment and understanding. And I pray, Lord, maybe you'd open the door to be a witness in some capacity and that you'd use the seed that's sown to be a difference maker in somebody's eternity, God. I pray you do that. Be with Brother Connor tonight, Lord, and help our church. Lord, be with those that should be here tonight, but Lord, didn't make it a priority. God, I pray you'd help them, Lord, and, and, and Lord, pull them back in, draw them back in, God, and, and touch them and speak to them, Lord. I pray you be with those that wish they could be here tonight. Touch all those on our live stream. I pray you bless them and watch over them. Lord, just touch our church. We're trying to grow. We're trying to live for you and serve you. And Lord, I'm so humbled by what you've allowed us to see and be a part of and just pray you continue to help us. We surely do love you, Lord. You've surely been good to us and we pray you'd watch over us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. <clears throat> amen. Well, has anybody got a word, maybe a testimony in your heart, something you'd like to say or do at this time, anything at all? Anything at all? All right. Connor, be all right if I sing a special for you? You want me to? Give you a minute? That'd be all right, wouldn't it? Wouldn't hinder you? Mind the Lord. That's what I'd like to do. Thank you, brother. Thank you. 
Maybe. Can you get me a mic? Red. I'll have no fear Cause Jesus walks beside me For I'm sheltered in the arms of God So let the storms rage high Dark clouds rise, they won't worry me, for I'm sheltered safe within the arms of God. He walks with me, and not of earth can harm me. sheltered in the arms of God. Soon I shall hear the call from heaven's portals. Come home, my child. It's the last mile you I'll have no fear Cause Jesus walks beside me For I'm sheltered in the arms of God So let the storms rage high the dark rise, they don't worry me, for I'm sheltered safe within the arms of God. He walks with me, and not of earth can harm me. Sheltered in the arms of God. Well, I'm thankful tonight that that the Lord has always been good. Let me get this on here. Thankful that there's a peace that passes the understanding inside my heart tonight. Take your Bibles and go to Second Samuel chapter number nine. I'm gonna give you a, give you a thought that the Lord's had on my heart for some time. Second Samuel chapter number nine will be in verse number 
We'll start out in verse number one. And David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when he had called and called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in a house of Machir, the son of Amiel, in Lodabar. The king, then King David sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, from Lodabar. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake. And will restore thee, and re, will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table at my table continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am? Then the king said unto Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertained to Saul and to all his house. Thou therefore and thy sons and, and thy servants shall till the land for, for him, and thou shalt bring him in the fruits, that, and that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread alway at my table. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. And then said Ziba unto the king, According to all that my lord the king hath commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do. As for Mephibosheth, said, said the king, he shall eat, eat at my table as one of the king's sons. And Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah, and all, the, and all that dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants of Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth dwelt in, the, in Jerusalem, for he did eat continually at the king's table. Lord, I do ask you to help me tonight. Lord, I do have a burden on my heart to give to our church family. Lord, thank you for, for what you have put in my heart, and thank you for how you've used it to help me. Lord, I'm thankful that your word is quick and, it's, and it can give, give us help. Lord, I'm thankful of all that you've done. Lord, I want, Lord, I want to thank you for what you've done this weekend at Youth Retreat, and thank you for the four souls that were saved. And we do ask you to help us tonight. Lord, I pray that you would help me, that you would settle my nerves. God, help me, please. I do ask, that, Lord, if, Lord, I pray this wouldn't be a message I just preach because of familiarity, Lord. I pray it'd be something that you would use to use for each person that's here under the sound of my voice tonight, that you'd use it in their lives. God, Lord, I ask you to help me tonight. Lord, I pray you'd help me to be in your, in your time. Lord, I ask you to help me. Lord, if there's somebody that's lost tonight and does not know you as their Savior, Savior, Lord, I pray that you would speak to that individual and show them that show them their need of a Savior. God, I ask you to help them tonight. Lord, I pray you'd help us in Jesus' name and everything we give thanks. Amen. So I just want to give you tonight a little bit of a... So we've seen... I just want to give you a little bit of what Lord's laying on my heart. We see here in 2 Samuel chapter number 9... We've got we got a, a we got a servant here, or we we have a, a per, start out here in, chat, in verse one. David said, David has come up to the house of David's come to uh, the house. Of, he's looking for, or he's got his servant Ziba, and he's got and he's looking for he's he's wanting to find out if there's anybody that is left of what the past king of what the past king that was there which would have been Saul King Saul uh, we know that King Saul was taken out a few a few chapters back and if we and I'll, I'll just kind of give you a few thoughts that I wrote down if we was to look tonight at um or if so if we look at 2 Samuel chapter 9 and it says that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake and to understand what Jonathan's sake is talking about 
you'd have to go into um, 1 Samuel chapter number 18, and I'm not going to have you turn there. I'm just going to give you a few thoughts that I've wrote down. We see, if you're to look at the end of second of or at the end of 1 Samuel chapter 17, we see that David has killed Goliath. They, and he has um, he's he's cut his head off and and he's being praised all over the town. We see that um, Saul comes out to find comes out to find David to find out who this who this person was that killed one of the biggest giants in the land. And we see that um, we see that and then after that we see that David be, befriends Jonathan, who is Saul's son. We see that they that they form a covenant. And of course, if you and we also read in First uh, Samuel eighteen that Saul become very wroth at David. Saul, it started because there was there was some ladies in the town. They were going they were going through the town and um, making music about how Saul had slain his thousands, but yet David had slain his ten thousands. And they were seeing this, and of course, Saul becomes very wroth, and he tries. Matter of fact, he tries to want he wants to take out he wants to take out David and and we see between First Samuel eighteen and First Samuel nineteen there will be three different attempts where Saul tries to kill David and um, we and then of course we if you if we and I'll just show you this verse here over in First Samuel chapter twenty. First Samuel, if you look at First Samuel chapter twenty and verse number, First Samuel chapter twenty, verse number three, and David swore moreover and said, Thy father certainly knoweth that I have found grace in the eyes, and he saith, Let not Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. But truly, as the Lord liveth, and as a soul liveth, there is but a step between me and death. We see here that David, who David has has befriended Jonathan, but yet we find in three chapters later he's running for his life, and he is he's he knows that at any time Saul could come around and, and take his life away from him, and of course and so we see and of course we see on that at that uh, David he's from using from what he's seen here in First Samuel chapter twenty, God the Lord is using this. And what we what we see here in Second Samuel chapter nine that he's wanting to show grace because somebody should because because Jonathan made a covenant with him and let me just let me just apply this for just a minute if we were to think about if we were to think about us if we were to think about how we were see I was lost and I was dead in sin but the Lord put His own Son on Calvary to die for my sin show and made and made a way for me to get saved. And so we and we see that God and that, and we see that the and see there was a covenant. I'm thankful that God that the, that the Lord made a way for me to get saved. Because hey, if there was a Calvary, if there was never, if there had never been a covenant from Calvary, there'd be no way we would be that m- most of us would be in here tonight. There'd be no reason for us to stand here behind this pulpit and preach to you that Jesus, how good He is and how wonderful He is. Let me tell you, that's the, the that is one of the best things. So we see that there was a covenant that was that that stood in place for Mephibosheth. Um, I want you to notice. Let's look at ver, uh, back in Second Samuel chapter nine, verse number three. And the king said, "Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God unto him?" And Ziba said, "Jonathan hath yet a son, which is." Lame on his feet, and I want and see the thing is when I was lost in sin, I was I was when I see when I was lost in sin, spiritually I I was just I was a lame person I couldn't do anything, but by the grace of God I get to stand here tonight and tell you that God is good and that He's He's everything you ever need, and the thing and the thing and I want you to notice that Mephibosheth. Or that David was still wanting Mephibosheth, even in spite of the fact he was that he was lame, that he couldn't really do much except just come, maybe do some things here or there. He could come, he could come to the table to eat, but that, but that'd be about it. And and I want us to see that if we look at verse four, and the king said to him, "Where is he?" And, Z- and Ziba said unto the king, "Behold, he is in the house of Machir, son of Amiel, in Lodabar." 
So and we so we see here that he's in a place, that he's in a place what what they call Lodabar. Lodabar is a place where you is a place spiritually that it would be it's a very hard place. It's a place where you people would stay. It would be a place where people would stage and they would just be completely useless. And and at times in a Christian life we can get to the place where we just that's where we just want to be in Lodabar. We want to be dry and bitter about things that maybe happened in the past. And we see, and one thing about Mephibosheth, he was lame because when the when the king when the king's when the king's house is being besieged, Mephibosheth actually fell and and and, and broken both of his legs, and that was how he was lame. We see. And I want us to notice, we see in verse number 5, and then King David sent, fetched him out of the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, from Lodabar. We see, we see that his presence was, was requested. If we look at verse 5, that's a picture of the Holy Spirit drawing a sinner. Let me tell you, friend, if you've never, if, if the Holy Spirit has convicted you about your sin, It'd be the best thing you can do is to give in and let the Lord have it. The Lord can do anything about the Lord can do anything. Any Lord can Lord can do anything above that anybody else could ever do. We see here that um we see here that the uh that it that we see it's a picture of the Holy Spirit. We see, I want you to look here at verse number six with me. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold thy servant. Behold thy servant. I want you to think about it this way. You know, Mephibosheth could have decided that he rather than come rather than come up from the uh, rather than come than come out of come out of Lodabar. And come back with come back with Zeba. He could have stayed there, and or he could have told that servant he that um, you know Zeba. I was like, I don't really care much about David. Matter of fact, he, my grandpa didn't like him. I just I've got no use for him. That, and if Mephibosheth would have done that, he would have missed out on everything. He would have missed out on on he would have missed out on everything we've seen later on in this chapter. And I want, and of course, and I want you to notice this verse at that. And David said, "Mephibosheth," and he answered, "Behold, thy servant." I want you to think about it this way: if you, if we was to look tonight, I'm I'm not going to turn over there for sake of time. But if we was to look over at Luke six, if we was to look over at Luke six, Luke fifteen, Luke sixteen, if we was to look at that story of the prodigal son. You see, that prodigal son, he he asked for all of his, he asked for the father to give him the goods that pertain to him. He went out to the far country and he wasted it all. And then when he come back, he he asked the father. He said, "Lord, he said, how many of the of our hired servants?" But see, the father wanted him just to be a son. Let me tell you, I'm glad I'm in the family of God tonight. And even and it doesn't matter if I and and God forbid something happens to me and I get away from what from the will of God for my life. I'm still a son in His eyes. And and I'm thank and. And I'm th- and so we see here, and of course we see that Mephibosheth, he's just wanting to come to be a servant. He doesn't really know what's happening and doesn't know what is coming for or what is coming. So we see here. We see, and I want you to notice this too, that he came, that he that the son saw when he co- was coming to David, he fell on his face and did reverence. Now here's now here's what I want you to notice too. Mephibosheth, who's been stuck in Lodabar, he's lame. He he's lame on his feet. He doesn't he doesn't have much of a life, but yet he's came unto the king. But yet he's come unto the king, and he's and he's gave him reverence. When's the last time that w- w- that we, as a Christian, have come to the king and told him how much we love him? We just, I mean we've sang we've sang songs about there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. We've seen. We, I mean, we've seen this weekend about how our Savior's 
about my about our Savior's love, I stand amazed in the presence. When's the last time we just got at His feet and worshipped Him? Because let me tell you, He's worthy of our worship tonight. I want you to notice this next too. Verse num- Let's look at verse number 8. And he bowed, or let's go up to verse number 7. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for for Jonathan thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father. And thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am? I want you to notice this. Mephibosheth realized realized who he he realized who he was in that temple. The thing is, he he should have been like the rest of his family. See, when a when a new king see when a, the custom of back in that day was when a new king was come in. Usually, the old king and his family was they were either sent far away where nobody else knew about them, or they were all taken out, or they, their lives were taken. And essentially, Mephibosheth's life was in the balance because he didn't—he didn't know if God, he did and he didn't know if he was going to be sent away from everything, or if he was going to be, or if honestly, if he was coming for a death sentence. And so I want, and of course, we see here, of course, I, and we see that we see that David, he instead, he wants to restore everything back to Mephibosheth I'm thankful that God that our God is a God of restoration tonight he he's a not only he's a God of salvation he's he's a God that can restore and of course we see that Dave and of course I've, I've already mentioned about David or I'm sorry about Mephibosheth he could have missed out on he, he would have missed out everything else. Now I want you to look at verse number. Let's look at verse number nine. Then King David said, "Then King, da- then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertained to Saul and his house. Thou therefore, and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him." And thou shalt bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread always at my table. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Then then Ziba said unto the king, According unto all that my lord the king hath commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do. As for Mephibosheth, said, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons, we see in ver- we see through these verses we just read that Mephibosheth got a new reality check. It didn't matter what had went on in the past of Lodabar. It didn't matter how many times. It didn't matter of all the things that he had been that he had that, that he had been con- that he had went through. It didn't matter about how many not all the nights that he was scared. Didn't know how he was gonna how he was gonna make it. He we he he comes to the king and he gets a new reality check. I'm glad that I, I'm glad tonight that I don't have to go at home or go home and lay lay my head down at night and wonder how am I going to make it the next day? How am I going to be able to provide this and that? Because let me tell you, there's the Lord. The Lord is my helper, as as the Book of Psalms says. I'm glad I can take my burdens to Him and let Him take them. I'm glad I can take my load to the Lord and He can and He can and He can do and He can handle it a lot better than I can. Because the thing is, I could get in the way, and I would mess every bit of it up. We see that he got a, we see that he got a new source of his provisions in verse ten. And I want you to notice this in verse in verse number eleven. We see that, and he, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. We see he gets a new family. I'm glad that when I'm glad that. When I got when I got born again, I got born into a family of into the family of God, friend. I'm glad I get to come and be around my brothers and sisters in Christ, and I'm glad I get to, and I'm glad that I get to. Uh, I'm glad that I've got a I've got a wonderful church family tonight. And I want you to notice this, and and I'm and I'm wrapping up here. We see in verse number thirteen, so Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem. 
For he did eat at the king's table and was lame on both his feet. On both his feet. We see in verse number 13 that his past was covered. You see, when Mephibosheth come to, when he came back, when he came to, the, when he would come to eat at the, at the king's table, he would, he would just like, he would get, he would come up to the table, be there like everybody else. It didn't matter. It, it, nobody else seen, seen that he, that he was crippled on his feet. Nobody else seen him. I'm glad that the Lord sees me in spite of my faults and failures tonight. And I'm like, and so I've got a question. So the point, the, the, Ill, the Lord, the uh, message, uh, the title of this message I'm preaching and all is this. I remember Lodabar. And I just want to give you a quick, I just want to give you a quick testimony tonight of some things. Um, Brother Caleb, if I get out, if I get ahead, just stop, just stop me. There was a time in my life where I was going through some things, and I began to think, and I began to think about this message today and how it how it applied. Um, before I got before I came to this church, I had come through some things that I wouldn't really want most. I wouldn't want most people to do. I had I was see I was raised in a church just like this. I was raised in a in a good independent Bible believing Baptist church, and I was um and I was taught and I was taught taught I was taught the good I was taught the, I was taught the right things about worship I was taught the right things about about ser, about serving the Lord and I was taught and I was taught the right things. Um, and I begin to think about um, few about two or three years ago. I come through a situation, brother Zach. If you don't mind, just shut those live stream off. I just I feel like it'd be better if I just talk to my church family.